If you followed along in part one of this video series, you now have a basic sales funnel on your website. Now it's time to collect leads so you can email them about your valuable content and your offers and make conversions. In this video, you're going to discover the MailMint plugin. It's the perfect email companion to your WP Funnel setup and it's made by the same team and it integrates perfectly with your sales funnel. Hi, I'm Bjorn from WP Learning Lab and let's get started. And as you're following along in this video, keep in mind that we're using only the free version of MailMint in this tutorial. I have a discount for you if you want to upgrade in the future. I'll tell you more about that at the end of this video, but I've got you covered. Got a nice discount that's valid year round, and I'll give you more details on that later. Now we're going to set up the emails for the sales funnel that we set up with WP Funnels in the previous tutorial. Because every step of the way, this funnel is pretty basic, but you might have more complicated funnels. And on every step, you want to be able to contact your customer and encourage them to take the next step. And you do that by providing value via email. And we're doing that with a MailMint plugin, which also has a free version. And it's also created by the team behind WP Funnels. So the integration works perfectly and we can get this up and running really quickly. To illustrate how to connect WP Funnels and MailMint, I'm going to create a new funnel in WP Funnels before we move on to MailMint. So let's go to WP Funnels again. Let's go to Templates. Let's choose lead gen templates. I'm going to choose the puppy one we saw earlier. Click on import. And this landing page here is going to have the opt-in form for people to opt in. Let's just preview so I can show you what I mean. This form right here, which is super short, is going to allow people to submit their email address to join your mailing list. By default, this is through WP Funnels. If I click on the pencil here, if I scroll down to the form, once this is loaded, click on the form widget, we see here opt-in form, form source WP Funnels, but we also have MailMint as an option because MailMint is installed. If we don't have MailMint installed, that option would not be there. If I click on MailMint, we can choose a form. We currently don't have one. To create one, we are going to go over to MailMint, go to Forms. You can click on the item on the left here or right over here. And here we're going to create a form. Super simple. Let's, uh, well, there's a free plan and paid plan. So let's choose the free forms and let's see which, which ones we have. A whole bunch of options, even for the free version. We just want a really basic one. So I'm just going to go start from scratch because all we want is an email field and a submit button, which is this one right here call this pet grooming opt-in form. We're going to add these people who opt into this form to a list. We have to set that up in just a minute. We can add them to lists or tag them or both. I recommend both. I'll tell you why in a minute. On the right hand side, we um, determine the action that happens after they submit the form, after they fill in the email address and click submit. We can go to the same page, which has the form replaced by a message we put in here. We can go to a different page which is one that exists on our website. And the WP Funnels pages don't pop up here. So we're not going to use that. We're going to choose a custom URL. And if we go to our funnel builder, this is the pet grooming lead gen we're working on right now. Click on the gear icon. We can get the link to the thank you page. I'm going to click on copy. Go back to MailMint. Paste that in there. And it kept that beginning part. There we go. So it has the full URL. When you just click in here and just copy this, it just has that part of the URL. Click on the copy button, it's gonna have the full one that you can paste into here. The redirection should be really fast so that your visitor might not even see this, but in case they do, make it something that makes sense. Here we have the option to run an automation for a user multiple times. So if the same person with the same email submits this form over and over again, do you want the automation to run? The automation in this case being they get something in return for for opting in maybe a pdf download or a video course or a phone call from you or something so do you want that to happen every time they opt in because sometimes people forget they might opt in today and then opt in a year from now and they might not even remember they opted in today a year from now so you can choose to have that run multiple times if you want i'm going to have an always visible form here you can decide if you want an email every time the form is submitted this is a lot of fun in the beginning but it gets pretty tiresome if you're getting multiple opt-ins every day and it's just an email telling you you got another opt-in. It can get pretty tiring. You can choose the form type here. Most of these are pro, but we also just want this super simple in this case because we're going to integrate this to an Elementor page. 
The form appearance, we can customize here. There's a lot of options. You can have the form appear only in certain places, depending on what you choose here. And the close button color, which is, uh, I don't know what the close button is. I guess that's for pop-ups. You can set the color for that here. And then we can publish. And then we can publish the form. Won't let us publish until we have a list. I guess we gotta do that first. So let's go to contacts. Let's go to lists, add new list. Let's call this pet grooming email newsletter. For example, pretty good description too. Save that, there's our list. Now go back to forms. This is the one that we're working on, pet grooming opt-in. For our list, check that one. Now publish, form saved, excellent. Now if I go back over to here and refresh this page, Go back down to our form widget, choose mailment. I'll select a mailment and the pet grooming opt-in. So if it doesn't auto select that, choose mailment from here and choose the appropriate form from here. Then click on update. And now when we go to the landing page, it'll have our proper form. And if we enter a functioning email in there, you can even enter a non-functioning email, but I'm gonna enter a functioning one. Click on submit and then we have us added as a contact. Bada bing, bada boom. And speaking of non-functioning emails, you can also integrate with zero bounce, which verifies email addresses. So if you have people who submit non-functioning emails and you send an email to those people, the message is gonna bounce. And that's a bad signal for ISPs that you might be a spammer of some kind, even though it wasn't your fault. Zero bounce helps you avoid that by taking out emails that don't exist. So we have our contact here. If we click on them, it shows us details, pulls in my WordPress image up here. There's more information on the right if you upgrade to Pro. It shows us emails that we received, purchase history if you're Pro, form submissions, notes. These are things that you can add. So it's kind of like a, a basic CRM, which is pretty slick. You can also add tags. Tags are quite useful because it helps you organize where people are in their customer journey. So our list is the pet grooming newsletter, but what has actually happened? What, what have they actually done during the course of being on this newsletter? And for, for an example is I have opt-ins for PDF downloads that help you do certain stuff with WordPress. When you opt in for that, your contact record is tagged with requested a certain PDF. I have the actual name in the, in the tag set up. And then I send an email immediately saying, hey, you requested this, thanks a lot, it's gonna be awesome, download it here. If you click on the link in that email to download it, it replaces the tag that was given as requested it and replaces it with the tag downloaded the specific PDF. And so that helps me organize where people are in the customer journey. And you can have something like that for every single step. And then when you're creating campaigns, you can send them to people with specific tags or people on lists. So a campaign is basically just emails. You could have a campaign be one email, maybe your weekly newsletter. You could call every week a different campaign if you wanted, or you could call the whole thing a campaign. This depends on how you wanna work it internally. But a campaign is just a series of emails. For Mail Mint, you can have a regular email campaign, create a single email. This would be like a weekly newsletter. You can create an email sequence if you have the pro version and a sequence for automation if you have the pro version. The difference is this email sequence could be about your Black Friday sales are coming up and you wanna schedule all the emails in advance. Maybe you have 10 or 15 that you wanna go at at certain times and certain days. You can schedule all that here. And the automation sequence is more like welcome emails, card abandonment emails, things that run automatically when your contact does certain things on your website. For the free version, we can create just a regular campaign. We can select our recipients based on the list. So maybe it's a newsletter that I wanna to send to everybody, or we can just send to specific people on our list based on what their tags are. This is pretty powerful. This is called segmentation quite often. So if I were to have someone on my general WordPress mailing list, but they're really interested in WooCommerce, maybe I somehow discover that using what pages they visit on the site, uh, a survey software, various things you can do to figure out what people are interested in. 
you tag them appropriately, then you can send them more specific information about the stuff they're most interested in. That's how tags become quite useful. There's also segmentation in the pro version, which is more integrated and easier to do than what I just described with the tags, but you need the pro version. With the free version, list and tags is all you get. Here you title the email, newsletter one. This title is just for you. Here's the subject line. Here's the preview text. You can use dynamic and personalized data. So you could go to contact, first name, and the subject line, hey, and that's gonna include the person's first name. Read this email. You can also use OpenAI and ChatGPT to help with creating a subject line, to help with the preview text. You want to choose the from name here, or enter the from name there, and email address, reply to name and email address. And then down here, we're gonna edit the actual email template. I clicked on that previously, so we're into here, but you would end up, well, the first time I click on it, you'd end up here where you can choose templates. There's a lot to choose from. You can customize them to your needs, or you can just choose start from scratch, which brings you to this template here. I'm gonna choose a template. I'm going to use this one. Nope, gotta upgrade to pro for that one. So there's a bunch that are free, a bunch that are upgrade to pro. Let's do a giveaway. Let's apply the giveaway template. We customize this to however we need it. Then we can send a test email. You should always send a test email. Test it on your computer, desktop computer or laptop and mobile devices to make sure it works everywhere. And you can customize this email to your heart's content using all these widgets on the right hand side. With the pro version, you can automatically pull in posts. Like for example, if you wanted to send an email that highlighted your most recent posts, you can have those automatically pulled in using this widget with the pro version. You can have WooCommerce products automatically pulled in with the pro version. You can change the layout to one column, two column, three column, and four column. You can change the styles for their overall email and the design. You can click over here and create the text-based version. This one is for people who don't have a visual email reader, which believe it or not, that happens. That's why a lot of mailing lists you'll join, they're just gonna be text-based. And they usually have shorter sentences like this, for example, to make sure you don't have to look too far across the screen. And it works better on mobile to have that all organized how you want it beforehand in the email. And when you when you send these emails, more people get them, more people read them. That's why a lot of email newsletters are just super basic like this. Anyway, you can choose which design you wanna focus on. You can test different device layouts and how it looks on different devices. And you also wanna make sure you send yourself a test email and view it on your desktop computer or laptop and mobile devices to make sure it works as it should. Once that's all done, click on next, then click on either save draft or send. If I click on send, it's probably not gonna work because I don't have SMTP on this site. And that's basically just an email service that you send through versus using your hosting accounts email. And when you're sending promotional emails, it's recommended you have an SMTP set up. Click on send. And then when you actually have people on your list, you can send the email. Currently this list has nobody because my contact that we entered earlier needs to be double opt in. This is kind of an industry standard. My, I'm not receiving the double opt in because this is on a local host, but there should be a setting to turn that off as well. Let's see if we can turn off double opt in. There it is, double opt in, turn that off. And do I recommend you turn that off? No. Not really, but I have noticed a lot of people don't really worry about that. Even politicians, the people who make the laws, I have noticed somehow got my email and I didn't give it to them <laughs> and I didn't double opt in yet. They still got my email. So even the people who are making the laws are, are breaking the, the spam laws. So take that how you want to take it. I'm just going to opt in again to see if we can just be not double opt in. I'll delete this. Delete this record. Because we want to see how the email sending works, even though I won't receive the email. There we go. Now our status subscribed because we turned off the double opt in. And now if I go to the email campaign here, make sure I save draft before I refresh. Now we have one recipient on our list. We can click on send. We can send it now, we can schedule it, we can have this be a recurring email. I can't think of a lot of use cases off the top of my head. 
for which you want to send the same email over and over. But maybe when you add the, the posts widget, you could send a email every week with the new posts for the week. That's an idea. Click on send. Campaign has been successfully sent and you can see how many opens, how many clicks, how many bounces, and then more data with the pro version. If I go to the contact again, we should be able to see an email being sent to them. Nope. I guess because I haven't opened it because it's because we just sent it moments ago. But this should show. Oh, there it is. There's the email we just sent. And then if I open it and click it, it'll show data here. And I won't because I'm not receiving the email because I'm on localhost, but that's okay. So that's our campaigns. We also have the ability to add automations. We touched on this earlier. This is things like welcome emails, things like abandoned cart recovery and everything in between. Most of these are pro. These three up here are not. And we saw the forms earlier and how to build a form. We saw the email templates. Let's see these guys here that we saw earlier inside the email builder itself. You can also create your own templates that you can save and use over and over. You can enable cart tracking, which is tied to WooCommerce. If someone enters their email address but doesn't go through with filling out or and actually purchasing, then you can send them abandoned cart emails. The integrations we saw, there's a lot of different settings you can go through and set Mailment up just how you want it. But the point is, we've connected Mailment to our WP Funnels funnel, and we can use that to collect emails and promote the stuff you're selling, either through WooCommerce or otherwise. And we've only used the free version today. There's also a pro version that I mentioned earlier. Throughout this video, we used only the free version of Mailment and only the free version of WP Funnels in the previous tutorial in this series. And if you want to upgrade to the paid version, go to this page. There's a link to it in the description down below. It gives you 15% off anytime you want to come here and sign up for it. Click on collect coupon now, enter your name and email. You get a 15% discount for life for any plan that you choose. And the plans, Currently, there's a 25% off promotion for WordPress's anniversary, so that's a better deal. So I go for that one. But if that if there's no deal currently, whenever you want to upgrade, then the 15% off, this one here, is always going to be available to you through the link in the description. So if we check out MailMint for the annual plan of the large, it's 300 bucks a year. Medium plan, 187 a year. Small plan, 112 a year. And all those minus 15% with that deal that I showed you earlier. And the only difference between all these plans is the number of websites that you can use MailMint on. And you saw a lot of these features throughout the video and the pro version of MailMint has way more features than we even saw. So it's, it's well worth the investment if you're sending lots of emails and you have a sales funnel that you wanna be really successful. MailMint is definitely something that can help you. And this discount is definitely something that can help you get your foot in the door I really appreciate the team behind WP Funnels and MailMint for offering this discount to WP Learning Labbers. And I'm happy that you guys can take advantage of this and start building your sales funnels a little bit cheaper. One of the biggest mistakes you can make when building sales funnels and trying to make sales online is having a slow website. Because most of your visitors will not tolerate a slow website. And if they don't stay, they don't convert into customers. If you're interested in speeding up your site, this right here is the video for you to check out.